Thanks very much, Riaz. We are here in Richmond at Phoenix Perennials, where even though spring has just sprung, we're going to tell you why it's time to start thinking summer. Up next on BT. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Get your garden on. That's right. Thanks very much, guys. And here at Phoenix Perennials, it's a little bit like fashion, Gary. We're, you know, we're into spring right now, but we always have to look at next season already. It's time to think about summer already. The spring bulbs are just coming up. Tulips, daffodils, crocuses. But it's time to think about summer bulbs that bloom in May, June, July, August, September right now because it's time to plant them. So what are we looking at? Well, here we've got hardy gladiolus. So for gardeners, we think that glads are just, um, have to be lifted every year. But these ones can be grown in the garden year round and left in the ground. Okay. Um, here we have the cousins of stargazer and Casablanca lilies, and these will give us August color with incredible spicy sweet fragrance that we love. Down below, these lilies are the tree lilies, which are crazy. After three years of being in the garden, they are going to grow to about eight feet tall with huge candelabras of flowers. And then these guys, super colorful, these are the Asiatic lilies, and these are the June color. So these will give us lots of great color, two feet of height, and they're great in containers or in the garden. Wonderful. Well, these are some great uh, things to start thinking about as we get into the next season, but ways that you can create and maybe show your love for someone with some great workshops. We're going to talk about those coming up in the 7 o'clock hour. Where we are talking creative expression, perhaps expressions of love, Gary. Perhaps. Perhaps. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> so we have over 50 different workshops a year, and here's an example of one of them that we're going to do, and they involve living walls and these really cool living wall planters, which come in letters, numbers, hearts, and stars. So funny that you chose BT. BT. Perfect. Yeah, so you can do your initials, like breakfast television. You could do... Gary loves Dawn. Oh, Gary, isn't that nice? Sweet. So, what do we need to know about a living wall and how to actually prepare it properly? So, what we'll be doing in the workshop, for instance, is we will be taking these little guys and we'll just be showing people how to design their living wall planter and plant them into these frames. And are there any rules, kind of rules of the of the road or rules of thumb as far as color pairings? And well, you know, it, it becomes an aesthetic choice. Some people might want to do all the exact same thing, or some people might want to do a whole bunch of colors because, you know, there are, though these are little succulents, there are lots of little options in colors, in reds and burgundies and, um, and greens. So in the workshop, are you going to teach people how to make these specific types of boxes as well? So the boxes will already be okay. made up, and we're just going to be teaching people how to plant them. Wonderful. For more details on the schedule of the classes, you can, of course, check out phoenixperennials.com. And, of course, spring is here. What colors are blooming? We've got those details coming up just before 8 o'clock. And spring has sprung. Maybe you're missing a little color in your garden. We've got options. What's blooming now for every garden situation, whether you have sun or whether you have shade? See with us. You're watching BT. We'll be right back live from Richmond. Yeah, and Jody, I think you tweeted that you have a shady kind of area that you need to work with. So we've got some options. And Freddie, our audio guy, was playing. I never promised you a rose garden, but we're going to promise some color in our garden color. for all kinds of conditions, right? Right, and for right now, these guys are blooming now in gardens. So if you need more color or you don't have any color in your garden or in your containers on your patio, here's some color. Okay, so what's our so first situation? Over here, these are all plants for shade. So if you see stuff you like here, um, great stuff. So this is a red form of the classic bleeding heart that's been in your grandmother's garden for years. Uh, we also have other types of bleeding hearts. We have the Burgenias. And up here we have all the primulas, which are great. Lots of great bold colors in, in primroses. But we want some fragrance sometimes in but our garden as well. Some fragrance. Yeah. So here in the middle, we have a whole bunch of plants for fragrance right now. And imagine stepping out of your door and smelling sweet fragrance at this time of year. We need a little bit of lift. So we've got skimmias, we've got wallflowers, and we have this neat shrub, which is called osmanthus, and it has great fragrance. How easy are these to keep alive? I'm someone who kills bamboo, so are these pretty I'm foolproof? only showing you stuff that's pretty easy to grow. Okay, yeah. excellent. And just basic watering? Yeah, basic watering. Uh, just follow the instructions. Excellent. Shouldn't be too difficult. So we had shade, we had fragrance, and now we want some sun. So here are some colors.
our four sun here. So, you know, we have the hellebores, which we've talked about on previous uh, episodes, um, and this is the late color from the hellebores. So they're now turning these really dark colors. If you didn't plant your tulips, it's possible to find tulips at garden centers now, including this one, um, with pots already planted up. Or I love these guys, these spurges. These are euphorbias, it's electric green, looks good today in the sun, but imagine a dreary, rainy day. These light up as if they're, got, they're plugged into the electrical socket. Brightening up your mood and your garden. For more details on uh, Phoenix Perennials, you can go to phoenixperennials.com. We're going to take a little time out here on breakfast television. Of course, we have all your news coming up next on BT. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks very much, Jody and Susie. And you know, gardens don't just have to be about flowers and plants. From flying saucers to flying pigs, we are talking art in the garden. Give me some inspiration this morning, live in Richmond at Phoenix Perennials. It's not just about plants and flowers in the garden. We're going to incorporate other things as well to keep things kind of interesting and maybe even modern. Exactly. So art, garden art, art in the garden. Uh, it's a fantastic way to accentuate your plantings, enhance your gardening experience, and, you know, just love your garden. And so there's lots of different ways to express yourself. Let's go elegant first. So let's go elegant first. So you could go with elegant obelisks, or you could go with, you know, pretty flowers, things that we would expect in the garden. And something nice and tall also builds it up quite nicely, like so, those yeah, ones exactly. there. Yeah, exactly. Nice obelisk. Or how about super modern with these hover dishes from our, our buddy Todd at Pot Inc. Super modern, bold colors, even a pot can be a piece of garden art or a hanging planter or you can go whimsical with these kind of rock animals so you've got you know like a little frog prince and you've got a rock -a pillar <laughs> I love it so lots of fun things or how about over here you can go totally crazy totally zany uh, with all of these you know reclaimed metal sculptures flying pigs crazy fish and you've got some great options here, but we should point out, too, that there are many things people could incorporate into their garden. All they need is a little bit of inspiration, so they may have something in their garage or something that is even an heirloom that they can kind of incorporate into their existing garden yeah, as well, right? Yeah, the new right? term is upcycling, for instance. <laughs> so we, we take these found objects or these old objects that we've had, and we incorporate them into the garden, maybe plant them up or maybe hang them from a tree or, you know, any the sky's the limit for creativity. Maybe get the kids involved as well. If you want to get a more involved garden, you can check out Phoenix Perennials, phoenixperennials.com for more details. Thanks so much for having us out here. We're going to take a little break here on Breakfast Television. Russ has your final forecast. Will the sun continue? Stay with us. You're watching BT.